What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Collective Minds Strike Pack FPS Dominator Mod Pack for PS4. This thing is available right now for $39.99. It's available all over the place. I got mine at GameStop. Uh, you can get them on Amazon as well. Uh, it's also available for the Xbox One. I believe it's about $5 cheaper for the Xbox One as well. And what this thing essentially allows you to do is add paddles to any PS4 or if you buy the Xbox version, Xbox One controller. Now, I am a scuff user. I use a scuff controller on a daily basis because I mainly play FPS games. And the main reason I use a scuff controller is so that I have the paddles on the back which allow me to jump or to revive somebody and aim at the same time. Basically to hit buttons over here without taking my thumb off of the right thumbstick. It allows me to aim and perform functions that I normally have to hit press buttons over here for. And I love that functionality. What I hate about my scuff is one, the price of the thing. This one cost me $200. And two, it's based off a regular PlayStation controller. A lot of the internal parts like the triggers, the thumbsticks, the buttons, they're standard PS4 pieces. And I've gone through a lot of PlayStation 4 controllers. In fact, this scuff is actually wearing out right now. The right trigger is a little bit sticky. I'm having a little bit of trouble pushing in the left button or the left thumbstick. It doesn't always register. And uh, you know, that's a real bummer on a $200 controller. So what the mod pack does, the problem this solves is that if you have a standard PS4 controller, you can add the mod pack on and it gives you the paddles, but if your controller breaks, you can just take the mod pack off and put it on the next one. So let's talk about the mod pack a little bit by itself and let's see if it's worth it. I've been using this thing for about a month now and I gotta say, I've really come to enjoy it. There are some, there are some details that can be uh, a little weird, uh, but essentially, if you can deal with those problems, it's a very low cost alternative to something like a scuff. So in the box, you're gonna find the mod pack itself. You're gonna find a 10 foot cable and you're gonna find the instructions. Instructions are right over here. The instructions are actually pretty detailed. This thing does do more than just having uh, the paddles on the back. It also comes with rapid fire, drop shots, quick scopes, jitter fire, auto run, a bunch of shit that I'm not gonna use essentially, uh, but you can program it to cheat at video games if you want. We're not gonna do that. The reason I wanted this thing was just for the paddles and that's mainly what I'm gonna talk about here. So first of all, one thing of note is that you have to have the controller plugged in using the USB cable to your PS4 to allow this thing to work. If you have it wirelessly and this thing is on and you turn the thing on, you turn your PS4 controller on, the PS4 controller will work wirelessly, but the mod pack won't be powered up, it won't be working. It needs to be a hardwired connection to the PS4 from the mod pack. So to put this thing on is very, very simple. You simply slide it onto the back of the controller here. As I say, it's simple. You just click it into place here and there's a little flap that goes over the PS button. It's got a couple of tabs that plug into the speaker. You hear it snap into place and uh, you're pretty much good to go at that point. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about this connection here. It uses a pretty standard micro USB connector, but it's recessed into here, which I like because it protects that connector a little bit. Uh, I've personally had the issue on standard PS4 controllers where you plug the cable into the controller and you put it on the table and it actually rests on that connection and puts stress on that connection. Over time, that micro USB connector seems to wear out and the controller won't charge anymore. So it's nice that this thing ha is recessed and gives it a little bit more support. The bad thing about this is that you kind of need a special cable to fit into there because you really have to stick it deep into the hole to get it in there. And that could cause a problem if your cable wears out that came with it, if a, you know, a dog or a cat chews it up or it just wears out from general wear and tear, 
Uh, it might be hard to find a cable that fits. I tried a couple of anchor cables that I had sitting around. None of them fit. Uh, so it is important to kind of know that, yeah, this cable is kind of proprietary. Uh, however, it does offer a little more support than a standard PS4 controller. Uh, but, you know, that may be a deal breaker for some. Uh, for me, I play wired all the time anyway. I like to just keep it plugged into the PS4. I'm close enough to my PS4 that it doesn't really make a difference to me. It's always charging. It's always ready to go. And with the newer PS4 controllers, uh, they do actually communicate over USB, uh, as opposed to the older ones, was only charged and they always communicated over Bluetooth. Uh, so I really like the newer PS4 controllers because you get just a little faster response and you don't have the Bluetooth issues of the older ones. But, you know, if you are on the other side of the living room, you get dogs and cats walking around, if the PS4 is hidden behind a piece of furniture, then, you know, a scuff is definitely going to be for you if you really want the panels because this will work wirelessly. This, in its current configuration, will not. So let's talk a little bit about the mod pack. Uh, as you can see, you know, it sticks out a fair bit from the back of the PS4 controller. One of the things I was worried about right off the bat was, was this thing going to be bothersome? Was it going to get in the way of my fingers? Was it going to be uncomfortable? And uh, once I put it on, I noticed it right away, but once I started playing, I found that my fingers kind of gravitated toward the paddles and I never actually touch the back of the mod pack, which is great. So for me, I've got pretty thick, meaty fingers uh, and no, I don't really touch the mod pack, which is great. It's a little weird of a position uh, where the paddles actually are. You can see they're up against the grip and you actually squeeze it toward the grip as opposed to with a scuff, you push it upward toward the controller. Uh, and it took a little bit of getting used to at first, but I gotta say, I actually prefer this method. It feels more like hitting a button as opposed to pushing a lever, uh, which is great. It's very easy to program as well. On the back, you can see there are two buttons. Basically, you hold down the paddle, you push the button, and then you push the button on the face of the controller to which you want it to be linked to. So if I want this link to the X button, I just hold down all three of those at the same time and boom, Bob's your uncle. You're all set to go. Uh, so it's very easy to set up. It is a little odd. It does cover up the PS4's headset adapter, the jack on the PS4. So it uses its own adapter to replace it. That means in your PS4 software, this thing is seen as a headset which can be a little confusing if you use a USB headset or another headset that's plugged in directly to your PS4, uh, you may have to go into your PS4 settings and change it back to the headset you're already using. For me, I use a Blue Yeti microphone to talk to chat and, or to talk to my party. And I have to go in and ch change that uh, when I plug this thing in. Uh, one other thing I will note is other people who have gotten this, and I at first noticed that the thing will seemingly randomly disconnect while playing. During the first few days, I found this happen for fairly frequently, and I was like, you know, I can't really recommend this. It's a great idea, but I can't really recommend this to anybody if it keeps doing this. However, what I found was that if I turned my PS4 on, and then I turned on the controller with the mod pack attached and plugged in, I never had a disconnect issue. Uh, so it may be that by turning on the PS4 with the PS button on the controller, turned on the, the controller first, and then the mod pack got recognized later and that caused an issue. I'm not really sure why that happens, but it seems to have solved it. I've been using it for a month, month so far. Over the last probably three weeks to two and a half weeks, I have not had any problems with the mod pack disconnecting. Uh, and all I have to do to solve it is to turn on the PS4 and then turn on the controller afterward. And that seems to solve the issue completely. So overall, here's, here's the thing. I really like this. Uh, I've been playing with it exclusively for uh, about a month. I really like having the paddles. I'm a big time Destiny player. I really enjoy having the paddles to jump and to revive my teammates uh, without having to remove my thumb from the aim stick so I can shoot, aim, and jump and revive uh, without having to 
you know, hit buttons on the controller, which is great. For $40, I think it's a good price for what it provides. Uh, I really have no issues with the quality of the product. I wish that the cable didn't have this kind of pri proprietary protective thing on it. It's nice that it protects the cable, but it really limits the choices that you have for a cable. If you wanted to replace this cable, you'd probably have to call Collective Minds to get another one, or you might have to shave down uh, another one to you know, make it fit in there, which is kind of a bummer. It's kind of concerning, but for forty dollars, you know, it's it's a really good price. Compare that to one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars for a scuff. You're getting a lot of the same functionality out of the mod controller. But if wireless is a priority, then it simply won't work. You you really need to go with a scuff or one of its competitors. So that's my review, man. I really like this thing. I'm really satisfied with it. Um, for forty dollars, I feel like you can't beat it. And if your PS4 controller dies or it starts to wear out or you're having some issue with it, you simply remove it and put it on the next PS4 controller. Like it's really that easy. Uh, and I think that's a really nice feature because I don't find that PS4 controllers uh, last all that long. I know a lot of people say, oh, I've had my PS4 controller for two, three years. Well, I, I seem to have them for about six months before they wear out. <laughs> and it's usually, it's usually the right, right trigger or the thumbsticks that do the wearing out, uh, which is real unfortunate. So that's what I think. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I do have Amazon affiliate links down in the description. So if you end up buying either this one or the Xbox one, use that link and I'll earn a, I don't know, 50 cents or a dollar. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.